So you, so say somebody comes in and they're like, oh, my knee or, or my back has been hurting me for months or years. And what steps or things can, from a practical standpoint, that people could like take away? What could they do to, because you had that conversation, I would assume that they might go away for a month or two and then check back in with you to see without even really like, you just have a conversation. But what can you do to kind of set that environment like you would with that plant to make sure that it has water and sunlight, but also potentially like fertilizer for the plant. Obviously that's not necessarily going to be the same for the person, but what are some of the things that they can, people could do to set that right environment to get into that environment from a very practical standpoint? So the biggest needle movers that I see work most of the time in patients are the following. The first is getting sunlight in the morning. So first thing in the morning, getting outside, actually getting sunlight on the face, setting your circadian rhythm, because a lot of our healing is um, influenced by our circadian rhythm. So we have this internal clock that's in our brain that then gives the signal to all the other organs in our body that they then have their own diurnal uh, or nocturnal patterns, depending on which organ we're talking about. In the bone marrow, we actually have a nocturnal pattern where in the middle of the night, we actually get a release of stem cells from the bone marrow into the blood. And if you, have, if you have a dysfunctional circadian rhythm, so a dysfunctional central clock in the brain, that your bone marrow may not be getting the appropriate signals to have a nice strong impulse in the middle of the night. And so you might not be able to heal as well because you're not sending out as many stem cells from the bone marrow, things like that. A lot of that, this research is still super new. It hasn't fully been elucidated on, you know, the strength and the quality and, and those correlations, but it all falls into this idea of, hey, we've got a circadian rhythm, that circadian rhythm is there for a reason. It helps us to be awake and catabolic during the day and then asleep and anabolic at night. And those things are gonna be really important for healing. So practical tip number one is, within the first 30 minutes of waking up to get outside and get sunlight on your face. If, it, it, if, question, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, you're good, so you're good. Is, that, is the morning um, is what causes it to reset the circadian rhythm or optimize the circadian rhythm? Or is it like, oh man, I got a shower, I got to Because a lot of people are not getting up with an, an enormous amount of time to like do anything other than you know, take a piss and, and shower, grab food and then out the door. So is it pertinent in the morning or is it still have those same type of effects if they're like, hey, I'm going to go on lunch and I'm going to go for a walk? No, it, it's definitely the morning. And there's a, a, a set time. Uh, and, and Andrew Huberman of the uh, Huberman Lab podcast, he has like a great kind of five part series uh, from, in his podcast that he goes into the science behind all of this. And there is an, a window in the morning that again, this science, a lot of it goes like this over me, but in the morning, your eyes are gonna be most sensitive to that in the sense of setting the circadian rhythm. And so getting 10 minutes of sunlight in the morning, let's say before 10 o'clock, I think was the time frame he kind of had for cutoff, is different than 10 minutes at lunchtime or 10 minutes at, at 2 p.m. And, and that, that's obviously gonna be very different than getting 10 minutes of sunlight at 8 p.m because that's actually going to negatively inhibit your circadian rhythm and your, that can impact your, uh, your ability to sleep well. And so there's definitely like a prioritization to getting morning sunlight, you know, within, I think he recommends generally that first 30 to 60 minutes of being awake. If you can watch the sunrise, that's even better. Some people are gonna be, you know, up in the Pacific Northwest where it's really cloudy all the time and things like that. And that can still accomplish this, even if you're not getting direct sunlight, you might just have to sit outside for a little bit longer. So it might be 20, 25 minutes that you're outside in order to get this benefit and this effect. So that's that's practical tip number one, yeah. Okay, so then what's that, what would be that next? Uh, so they're like, okay, get sun, first thing in the morning, 10 minutes, depending on where you might be in the country. If you're up in New York, upstate New York, where I'm from, maybe it would be 25 minutes, right? But yeah. I'm now in Florida, so 10 minutes is fine for first thing in the morning for me here. Yeah. Thank you.